Welcome to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. In this episode, David C. Williams of AT&T rejoins me to talk about the power of robotic process automation or RPA. He will discuss what he has learned as he implemented the largest RPA initiative, which is 70 million daily transactions at AT AT&T. Listen in as he shares the value each person brings to the corporate team. Today, I would like to talk about robotic process automation, also known as RPA and the power it contains. How does it sound? Yeah, absolutely. Play in that space just a little bit. Okay, great. So we know that AT&T is one of the largest users of robotic process automation, you know, with over 70 million transactions. So what were some of the challenges that you had to overcome to get this in place, you know, at the level it is today? Can you share yeah. that? Sure. Um, and so I think it's, even, it's, it's, it's more than that. Uh, that's my team's uh, contribution to at and We have um, dozens and dozens of programs. I just happen to lead the largest one of them. Um, by production but um you know when i think about where we are today it's 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 great it's amazing it's over three thousand percent roi it's almost 400 million in operating income it's 70 million transactions but it didn't start that way um and it's kind of like building a bop program it's kind there's two things i would think about it's kind of like 5g we all know we want 5G. Um, some of the use cases aren't quite flushed out. It's not quite clear. You know, why do we want 5G? Um, there's a few, you know, concepts, uh, autonomous driving and uh, you know, very specific levels of GPS and indexing and things like that. But um, it takes a while for 5G to get to a place of maturity where everyone's really, really using it, you know, 5G very well made, you know, set the metaverse on fire where it's just a, you know, a totally new thing. Uh, and so you have to give a bot program time to mature. You can't put the pressures on top of it that it has to deliver day one. You got to give it time, just like 5G, for it to mature. Uh, I'm grateful that my team, we hit pay dirt, you know, we hit the ground running with it. Um, and we were, I think, we cleared over 2 million transactions the first year. Um, it doesn't always work that way. And although we were fortunate enough to have that uh, accomplishment, we're also conscious to know it does not always work that way. And so I don't put that kind of pressure on my team. When they hit a grand slam, we're going to celebrate, right? Pop bottles. But it's not always that kind of pressure on them to go do that. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing I would say is when you're building a bot program, uh, one of the most important attributes of it is the part that you never see for people to talk about, which is the sustainment rigor. Um, we have a, an extremely rigorous program in how we sustain these bots and keep them running all the time. There are um, tiers and levels of notifications. There are dozens on top of dozens of inventions that um, the folks on our sustainment team have create um, to keep those things going. And People may hear about some of the big inventions, the visual IVR stuff, the work from home stuff, but there are dozens on top of dozens of inventions and innovations they create literally every day. They create something new every day. Those two things, give it time like 5G to mature. And when you start off, make sure you have a good rigor on your sustainment, meaning how do you keep those balls you're juggling in the air? Have a good rigor on how to keep those bots running continuously because as you, you know, at my, where I'm at today, we have over 600 uh, clones and bots running, you know, in any given point in time. Um, our sustainment rigor had to be in place long before we got to that, that level of uh, production. Yeah, I think that, that is interesting uh, you mentioned that because a, a lot of time that, that sustainment piece gets lost in translation. And, and uh, uh, folks who have, a great idea or a great project that goes into action uh, always runs into these kind of bottlenecks after 
the go live. So that's that's really interesting that you mentioned about the power of sustainment, right? And how it can be uh, uh, detrimental if you don't put in place. Yeah, let me double click on it one time. So, um, and again, on my team at the culture Trump strategy. So we we bring our full super self to work. So the folks that have working on um, sustainment, there's one guy who leads that is we call him Neo, like Neo in the Matrix, um, <laughs> Andrew. And so, um, you know, he, he's always inventing new VBA code and all sorts of codes and things to keep those things going. Um, when I think about um, some of the things that they do, often the inventions, the, the better way to build a bot, we learn that from the sustainment part of the program, right? It's kind of like we take that feedback that they have, hey, this bot always stops all the time. It doesn't run all the way. It, 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 it hiccups every time in the morning. It, it's, it's this, it's that. We take those learnings and build and, and, and place those in the very front of our bot development processes so that we have better bots to sustain easier, yeah. right? It becomes the gift that keeps giving. And so um, my sustainment team, I mean, they, their voice is just as loud and is encouraged to, to pitch or, or, or um, um, add value into conversations when we're talking about brand new development as anyone because they see it from the worst side. They know which bots work and which ones don't, which ones work really good, which ones not so much. And so we want to always keep improving and we do it's to the point that that process we even renamed and we call it the tiger team because we have folks from sustainment that are always coming up to the front of the parade to to work through new things and that tiger team is looking for those things all the time and so it's just a continual process a virtuous process um, to get better wow so i think it seems like uh the continuous improvement is the key for for this to kind of keep on going right and the, the gift that keeps on giving once you once you have this in place right exactly. um so let, let let me ask you this you know you, you talked about that but what are some of the successes you're seeing now that rpa is really being leveraged like what 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 factors or you know things that you that stands out for you yeah well a few things so one again a three thousand percent roi uh, that's like cryptocurrency return right that's just yeah. nutty um, and it's not as volatile <laughs> <laughs> that's but, um, true. but you know so there's a, a huge return that, that you get with that and that's that I, that's a success i can't overlook but when I think about some of the in innovations and inventions that we have, um, we're taking bots way beyond what a normal bot would do. Uh, we're at a place now where we're really creating an ecosystem. Where the so for my team, I lead a, a hyper automation and emerging technology team. On the hyper automation side, we have bots, we have chat bots, we have web pages. On the emerging tech side, we have desktop orchestration collaboration tools, things that just never existed before, um, the, the stuff we were talking about with COVID, all that sits on that side of the house. Now we're at a place where both sides of the house are, are mixing together. And it's hard to tell one solution from the other. And, and we can all see that the end game is truly to create um, these hybrid solutions because a bot will only take you so far and a collaboration tool can only take you so far. But when you put chocolate and peanut butter together, you know, you're famous. Reese's there Reese's. you go. Right. That's, and so, that's, um, that's... yeah, so, so, but to, to hit a couple of nails on the head, you know, we've created um, some uh, really lightweight web page, like chat bots that connect to microservices and APIs. So instead of folks having to do work the old traditional way, they can do it a new way. And we don't circumvent any of the existing processes. Um, I think about one of our, uh, one of the most difficult calls in all of customer service is called a transfer of billing responsibility. Um, and that goes across any industry. When mom wants to pass the service down to the aging child, when Coca-Cola wants to pass the service down to um, the driver, whichever, you know, however you want to think about it, um, transferring a billing responsibility in any industry is a really tough one because you have two people and you're trying to uh, actually exchange or move transition the account ownership we put a solution together using bots web pages apis 
text messaging platforms, um, all sorts of verification tools and encryption um, and collaboration tools to solve for that problem. We did it in one of the most inexpensive, efficient ways. Um, and it's driving just a massive amount of, um, of savings and, and, and reducing friction from the process. And so I'm, I'm really proud for the things that the team's doing on those kind of uh, efforts again. And that stuff never existed before. Previously, you know, if Delta Airlines wanted to tober transfer um, billing responsibility for 5,000 flight attendants, that might drive 5,000 phone calls. But now we have a way to do that self-service so that it doesn't drive so much volume. That's a great success story. That's very interesting. So let, let's get into this on the personal side. I mean, your, your story is pretty amazing. What drives you to do all that that you're doing now? <laughs> let's, um, let's talk about that. Gosh, you know, um, my mother is my inspiration. And um, she, you know, we used to live, we, we would live by this mantra per se of making a dollar out of 15 cents. And I saw her do that, right? And making ends meet, we didn't have enough and she figured out a way. Um, I watched that for 18 years of my life. And in corporate America, I realized that I should not leave that ingenuity in the parking lot. If a, if a CFO could make a dollar out of 15 cents, that CFO would be CEO. Right, that's over a 600% return. Um, my, my call to action for folks, I would say, you know, when I think about my own self, is, you know, to not leave that ingenuity, that dollar out of 15 cents in the parking lot. That's a very transferable skill that applies in corporate America as well. You just have to fit the protocol. And so, you know, logic like that, um, you know, my mother also told me that, one in one makes 11. You just got to bring your best self. You bring your best self. I bring my best self. We get close enough together, working together. One in one makes 11. And that's how you get further, faster, uh, further, faster. And so I, I, um, I strongly believe in that. My team hears it all the time. And we go do it every day, literally. We make it, uh, we, we put one in one together and we do exponential things. That's a great advice. I, I think I, I'll take it any day. So, and I, I, I like the way you connected it to the corporate world because a, a lot of times, you know, we, we forget that the things that we learned in, in the early times of our lives doesn't go away. And they can, it's a gift that keeps on giving as long as you're willing to apply it, right? And that's what I'm hearing from you. Yeah, you know, corporate America is, um, it can be, overwhelming it can be intoxicating to some it can um it can it can do a lot uh, it can be overbearing to some but we have to remember that we're humans first sure we may work like machines or work on machines but we're humans first and i strongly believe that culture beats strategy you bring the best minds i get the best culture i believe i'll beat you hands down. And so there's so many um, perspectives of culture that sits on my team. And all of those perspectives are so encouraged and welcomed to meet every day, not, you know, sit in your back pocket, not sit in the car, not I can't say something. That's not my project. So I can't say anything about it. no, 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 no. Everyone has the freedom to say something about every project, everything that we're working on. And uh, those ideas, uh, I, we just don't leave them by the wayside. Those little bitty ideas at times change everything that we're doing. They, it's a golden thread that leads into something else. Totally, totally. So let me ask you this, you know, um, you know, we always talk about projects going sideways, you know. Uh, what are some of the common mistakes you see happen uh, especially when companies try to adopt new technologies, you know, and I, I'll use the example of RPA because we talked about okay. RPA. So what, what things that you've seen uh, happens? Yeah. You know, I, I'll tell you one. So 
I think a lot of times we talked earlier about how RPA needs a little time to mature like 5G. And so sometimes what happens is when people implement a bot program, they'll marginalize it. They'll say, oh, that little thing over there, it's just a little bot. Oh, you know, that's the, what's the bot group, you know, whatever, whatever. And I understand that to some degree, you know, the, the, the capital in, spend on it, the intensity, the, you know, all those things may not be to the same rigor as traditional um, technology work. But it would be like thinking about Uber the same way during the, the pandemic. You know, Uber became a way of life for a lot of people. Grocery delivery became a way of life for a lot of people. And without those things, a lot of people would not have been able to eat on a consistent, regular basis. Yeah. Just the fact. And so um, when I think about mistakes that folks make when new technology, you know, bot programs meet traditional um uh, technology stacks. The thing I think most, or, or if I could just hit one point on it, is that it's kind of like American Airlines. They are amazing at transporting people from Los Angeles to New York or around the world. They are amazing at doing so. However, American Airlines is not going to deliver your Tuesday, your tacos in 20 minutes. Not going to happen. And the more American Airlines tries to compete to deliver tacos in 20 minutes, the worse they're going to do. Right. And so there is a certain space that traditional stack IT sits in and nothing will change that, about that, not for the foreseeable future. But there are a ton of things that the bot program that bot programs can do that traditional programs are not equipped to go do. And it doesn't make sense to go spend the, 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 the capital expenditure to make those things happen versus just have a quick hit bot program that can go do all these things, right? And so if there's a mistake, I would say, I think at times people put these connotations on either side. The bot program doesn't bring meaningful value. The IT team should do it all, no. There's a space for everyone to exist, you know, play nice in the sandbox, and we have a, an even more gorgeous sandcastle. Uh, I like it. I like it. I think that that's mixed, uh, especially when you are looking at um, uh, the ownership factor, right? Um, and and my place in the organization, a lot of times that the bigger idea gets lost because everybody is looking at what I can add or what I should be doing versus what is the bigger good, which can be solved with not one solution, but a collaboration of solutions as well as collaboration of teams coming together. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Right. So uh, we, I think we're getting close to our, 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 our uh, call and uh, I, I like to leave my listeners with one key takeaway uh, that you can share with us. Yeah. All right. Um... Okay, I, I would say this. So I believe that, you know, if there's one thing I'd leave you with, it's this. I have a team of superheroes. I have a, a Superman, an Aquaman, a Batman, a Wonder Woman. I, you know, I got all these superheroes on the team. And uh, I encourage them to bring all that super personality to, to work every single day. Um, they joking kid, they, you know, kidney shots with me the whole night, right? They have fun. We all have fun. But I don't try to look at, I don't try to judge Aquaman by Batman skills or judge Superman by Wonder Woman skills, right? Everyone has their own talents that they bring to the job. And I try to be conscious about that and help everyone else as well be conscious about it so that Superman and Wonder Woman aren't trying to compete against each other. It's like, wait a minute, you guys have different, you know, you be the best Superman, and you be the best Wonder Woman, and you're the best, and work on being the best Aquaman. Because Wonder Woman and Superman will never beat Aquaman at what he does in the water. So you take that side and you go run with it to the nth degree, right? Um, that works at an individual level as well as a departmental level. So IT, 
go be the best IT you can be. Bot program, RPA, go be the best robotics process automation you can be. Aquaman, Wonder Woman, be the best at what it is that you do. And what will happen is we will come together like the Justice League or the Avengers, whatever you want to call it, and solve the biggest problems in the world. And that's where we are today. We have huge problems in front of us. We have no time for infighting within the Justice League or the Avengers or in our company. That's, that's, that's a great takeaway. I, I I love it, especially when you talk about just leveraging talent, right? Simple as that. And then everything comes together the way it should be. So right. uh, with that, uh, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for joining us, David. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thanks for listening to Tech Driven Business brought to you by Innovative Solution Partners. David shared some key points on how to leverage our RPA initiative. His key takeaways, give a part time and focus on sustainability when designing your solutions. Most importantly, how his belief in culture trumps strategy that leads to his team's success. We would love to hear from you, continue the conversation by connecting with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. Learn more about Innovative Solution Partners and schedule a free consultation by visiting isolutionpartners.com. Never miss a podcast by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Information is in the show notes.